abstract data types. So it's a mathematical object with a collection of functions or operators. Did you understand? I guess not. So we'll see a few examples to try to understand this concept. You have seen primitive data types like integers, uh, float, etc. And integers, for example, so let's let's take integers. So the, 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 the data type integer supports the collection of operations like addition, multiplication, um, or power, powering, etc. So this abs an abstract data type is a generalization of this idea. So an integer is, is, is a primitive data type with, a, with these uh, few operations. And an abstract data type is a generalization of this idea to may, maybe which, which contains other functions or maybe a more functions, etc. Right? So it's a generalization of primitive data type. Let's, let's try to understand this too, through a few examples. Example 1. Complex numbers. When you say an abstract data type, you have to tell what are the operations or functions which are defined on that data type. So complex numbers is an abstract data type which and what are the operations which you can um, associate with complex numbers. You can say addition, say can be addition, multiplication, the, the real component of the complex number, the complex component, etc. Right? Those operations correspond to the abstract data type called complex numbers. Let's look at another example. Vectors. <clears throat> what are the operations you can you associate with vectors? Again, addition, uh, dot product, norms. These can be functions associated with vectors. A third example, a list, a, a list of items. If, if you have used Python, you know what is a, a, a list. What are some functions you can associate with list? Add element to the front, Let's, let me call it add front, remove front, a function which talks about the length of the list, search for an element. So these are operations you can associate with a list. Each of this uh, uh, abstract data type basically tells, tells you uh, a list of functions associated with that data type. So now a user of this abstract data type can use each of this abstract data type just like a primitive data type. So you, uh, he or she can just uh, you take a vector and like add vectors or multiply vectors etc. Right. He, uh, they, they can just use it just like the person uses a primitive data type. So that's that's the concept of an abstract data type. So the implementation details is hidden that is not mentioned as part of the abstract data type how each vector or a list or a complex number is uh, is implemented is not part of the definition of an abstract data type right so the implementation details are not the implementation details are not part of the definition. So the implementation can be different uh, if you are implementing in C or C++ or in any other programming language. Uh, this, is a uh, this is a mathematical model, right? And therefore, uh, the implementation details are uh, hidden. An abstract data type in some sense is supports encapsulation. ADTs encapsulate the data type. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that all the definitions of the data type and its associated functions or the operations are collected into one part of your project okay it can it could have been for example using header files right in the in the sense you can sep you can have a separate file for this particular data type like vector or a complex number etc so it can be through a separate file so uh, the idea is that you collect and store all the functions and operators for this particular data type and store it into uh, and, and encapsulate it, store it in one place. What, what, what is the advantage of it? Now, if you have to fix this data type or there is a bug in that data type, etc., you just go there and fix it. That's kind of the idea here. Uh, we will be 
creating abstract data types, uh, implementing abstract data types using C++. So in C++, we are going to use classes to implement abstract data types. So we use classes. Classes provide encapsulation. We use classes for this. Fifth, uh, fourth example, uh, what about set? What are the, uh, uh, so if you are, what is, in your view, what will be the operations defined on a set? You want to create a data type of set, what will be the operations you would want to define on a set? For, uh, you can think, maybe I can suggest something on thing can be union, can be intersection, can be size of the set, you can have add an element, insert an element into the set. create an empty set right you can have power set for example so the so someone asks you uh, give me an set ADT your answer is okay here is a, uh, a set ADT it supports the following functions okay so that's uh, good and in the next few lectures we, we are going to look at uh, a few of the uh, abstract data so implementation of few of the uh, abstract data types how each uh, different implementations might have different uh, advantages and we are going to look at uh, those thank you